Welcome to part two. If you haven't watched part one and you haven't selected your web hosting yet, make sure you check that out because I reveal some interesting information about what's going on in the hosting industry so you can make a more educated decision about where to host your website. If you chose my store, WebsitePalace.com to host your website, then you probably chose the WordPress site hosting option, which is great because you will have a managed WordPress hosting account, meaning WordPress is already installed. So go to yoursite.com slash WP hyphen admin, and you should get the login screen. If you did sign up with a different host, then you'll need to log into your control panel and look for the WordPress installation option and install WordPress from there. Then you can go to yoursite.com slash WP hyphen admin. If you're not able to go to that link, then contact your web host and make sure you set everything up correctly. Once you're at the WordPress login screen, you're just going to log in with the username and password that you set up. After logging in, you should see something like this, and this is your WordPress dashboard. The first thing you're probably going to want to do is select a theme or a design for your website. And the best way to do that is to go to appearance, themes, and WordPress has thousands of free themes in their repository. So you can click add new, and then you can even sort by feature. So if you know you want a blue theme and you know you want a responsive layout, which you should have, that means your theme will automatically size down to mobile browsers. So if somebody's viewing your site on a smartphone, it looks all nice and pretty. And there's some other options you can choose as well. So when you've selected everything you want, click apply filters and then WordPress will pull up all the available themes that fit your criteria. So now you're just going to preview the themes and then install the theme you want to install. And in seconds, you're now using that theme. The biggest difference between free themes and premium themes is that premium themes generally give you a lot more customization options. The other advantage of choosing a premium theme is that you'll always be confident that your theme will work with the latest WordPress version. WordPress is constantly updating their versions and a lot of free themes don't continually get updated. So they might break if a version comes out that's not compatible with your theme. This is rare, but it can happen. When it comes to customizing your theme, the two things you need to keep in mind is if you want to update your header, you generally will go to appearance, header, and your theme will tell you what size image to upload. So you just click add new image, upload the image from your computer and you're good to go. In terms of your sidebar, if you wanna add some AdSense code or some other type of image, you would go to widgets. Each theme has different widgets. It just really depends on the theme you use. This particular theme has a sidebar widget and it has two widgets at the bottom of the content. I'm using WordPress's default 2016 theme. The great thing about these free themes is that because they're created by WordPress, they're always up to date. So if you're going to use a free theme, these are great ones to use. They may not be very flashy, but at least you know they're always updated. So if I want to add some text to my sidebar of my site, I can just come down to the available widgets, grab my text widget, drag it so it lands right in the sidebar. And so I can have a title here and then some text here or I can paste some AdSense code or some ad code, whatever you have here. This will accept JavaScript, text, and HTML. So you're gonna click save, and then when you come up to view your website, you'll see what you just entered into the widget. So if you want another widget, you would just use another text widget and put it below this one. And that's how the sidebar widgets work. Now I just switched over to the Genesis premium theme just to give you guys an idea of how much more you can do when you have a premium theme. Genesis installs its own menu when you install one of their themes. So if I go over here to theme settings, you can see that I can edit a lot more. So for example, I can choose how many columns my theme has, and I can also choose where those columns are located. And if I just want one gigantic column, I can choose that as well. I have extra navigation, extras, and there's a lot of other features that I can customize. Genesis also has additional plugins you can install, such as simple hooks and things like that to help you edit other parts of your site, like the area below your header, the area above your content. So how much you can customize really depends on your theme. And that's why I'm not going to get too into that with this video, because everybody's going to choose a different theme. My favorite premium themes are Studio Pressed, Theme Forest, and Elegant Themes. Studio Press doesn't necessarily have the best designs, but they have the most customizable themes. 
Theme Force themes, a lot of them come with a plugin called Visual Composer, which automatically gives your theme a drag and drop functionality, which is really cool. So look into some Theme Force themes that include Visual Composer if you want more control over your design. Now let's get to the question a lot of newbies have, blog versus website. A blog is a type of website. A website just means you have a group of pages linked together in some type of fashion, where a blog means your content is arranged from newest to oldest. So when you first install and start using WordPress, when you publish a post, the post is automatically going to be added to the top of your homepage. So as you scroll down, your posts are gonna be organized from newest to oldest. This is your blog. But what if you don't want your website to be organized like that? For example, for me, I always organize my websites to where I have a static landing page where I can, for example, collect email addresses, but then I link to the blog section, which is my latest posts in another area of the site. And I'm gonna show you how to set all that up. So this is the home page to my blog. And as you can see, I don't have any posts on the home page. I just have a call to action for people who haven't started their website yet. And I have an opt-in for people who want to receive my latest blog posts. So this is a static page. It doesn't change with the exception of me updating content from time to time. But if you scroll up to this what's new tab at the top of my site, this links to my latest blog content or my posts in WordPress. So if you click the what's new tab, it shows my latest content from newest to oldest. And this is my blog format here. But what's great about WordPress is you can have the best of both worlds. If you want a more introductory homepage, you can do that. And then you can use the menu feature in WordPress to link to your blog content. To set this all up, we're gonna start by creating a brand new page. So we're gonna come over to pages and then add new. So let's call this, this is my homepage and we'll have our home page text. I can't type today here. And we're gonna click publish. So if we want that to be our home page, we're gonna go to settings, reading, and then we're gonna change from front page displays from your latest post to a static page. And this is where we select that page we just created. Now you can't see it because it's off the screen, but we're gonna select this is my home page and then click save. So now when we go to the home page, we're going to have that static page. Boom. That's all we have there. So now we can come up and edit this page as we see fit. So if you have an email service provider like MailChimp or AWeber, I use AWeber, then you can log into AWeber, grab the code for your opt-in box, go to the text tab here and paste it right in here so people can opt into your newsletter if you want to promote your newsletter on your homepage. So now you have this homepage that can welcome people to your site. So how do you set up that what's new tab or the blog tab that I talked about? You're gonna go up to posts, categories, and then we're gonna name it blog or what's new or whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna type blog and now click add new category. So now when you create your blog post, let's go to posts, add new. Here's your post, post number one or whatever you wanna call it. Over under the category section, you're going to choose blog. So let's publish that. Now we wanna add this new blog category to our menu so when someone clicks it, they can always see our latest blog content. So we're gonna to go to appearance and menu. And just so you learn how to use this, let's create a brand new menu. So this menu is gonna be very simple. Let's call this simple menu and click create menu. So what's great about WordPress is you can add any links you want to your menu. This simple menu is just gonna have three links. It's gonna have your home page. So let's click over here in our most recent content and click this is my home page and click add to menu. Remember, we're going to add our new blog category that we just created because that's how people are gonna see our newest content. So let's scroll down to categories because remember we created a category. There's our blog category, click add to menu. And then finally, let's do a custom link just so you see how that works. Maybe you want a link to your Facebook page, facebook.com, blah, 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 blah. And we'll call it Facebook. Click add to menu. Now we can drag, oops, I got a period there, oh well. So now you can drag these around however you want them. 
notice it says category. So this is always going to link to our blog category. So you just want to make sure that all your posts are labeled blog. So let's save this menu. And now we have to tell our theme to use this particular menu. So let's go over to manage locations and how many menus you have here will depend solely on your theme. So for this theme, I have two menus I can use. So let's use our simple menu that we just created and click save changes. Now, when I go to my home page, there's our new menu. Now I could have changed the title. This is my home page. looks kind of silly. I probably should have changed that to home or something like that, but you get the point. So now when I click blog, I should get my latest blog post automatically. So that's always going to show my most recent post as long as I tag my post with that category. Now I want to answer the question that a lot of people have. Do I need to blog? And I think that that answer depends on your situation. I think we're in a time where people think they have to have a blog, but blogging doesn't necessarily have to be a part of your strategy. Let's say you get all of your traffic from Facebook. You could create one landing page on your WordPress site. It could be just a page that has an opt-in to your email list. And then you use that email list to sell your products but you don't necessarily have to update your blog regularly. You might just have a website. I'm not saying you don't need a website. I think most people probably need a website, but your website might just consist of informational pages that you've arranged in a certain way. For example, I have a natural hair website. I don't really update it regularly or on any schedule. So when you come to the site, you don't see a blog link. It's just content that's arranged logically. So these are just pages that I've set up and you don't really see the blog functionality. And what's great about WordPress is you can do it however you want to do it. But I don't want people to think that they have to have a blog. Now, should you update your content regularly? Sure. And if you're going to be doing that regularly, then yes, maybe you do want to highlight your blog, but I don't think every website needs to be a blog. Now let's talk about starting your email list and growing your list. This is one of the biggest mistakes I made with my website. I didn't start collecting emails until my site was, I'm embarrassed to say, probably four or five years old. And even then I didn't start using it until many years later. Now for my to create site, I primarily use my list to keep people notified of my new blog content. So when I create a new post, it automatically sends a little snippet to everybody that's on my list. I use a company called AWeber. Now I've been using them since 2005. And let me just say, honestly, you guys, I have a very, very, very great grandfathered price. Basically for a five digit list, it's only costing me $29 a month. You're not going to get that kind of price today, generally. That's the advantage of signing up early. So shop around AWeber, MailChimp, which is another popular one, and a new one on the scene that I'm going to be using for my new site is called ConvertKit. The biggest difference between MailChimp and AWeber versus ConvertKit is that ConvertKit lets you put people into buckets based on options they click. So let me give you guys a great example. I'm working on a new website that is for people who want to sell their video content and courses from their website. This is the theme that I'm going to be using. It's called Hello Pro by Studio Press, except it's going to be pretty customized. I don't like this 1980s Price is Right background that's going on here. And obviously the picture will be me. But one of the things I like about this theme is the opt-in option. And so when people come to the site, they'll be able to opt in and they're going to get a free book that gives them some basic information about the tools they need to sell their video from their own website. So in exchange for signing up for my email list, they'll get this free book. This will then allow me to market to these people and give them discounts or whatever on my future courses. The reason why I'm choosing ConvertKit is because I can speak very specifically to my subscribers based on what I know about them. So when they opt in, they're going to be posed with a question. For example, how would you like to host your course or videos? Either self-hosted on WordPress, third party like Udemy or Teachable, or I'm not sure. And so based on what they click, I can send them follow-ups that match or cater to what they told me. So if someone says, I want to do a self-hosted course on WordPress, then my follow-up email will be something very specific to them. 
and it'll allow me to have better conversions because I'll know more about what people want on my list. AWeber has something sort of similar to this, but not quite. And I did ask them if they were gonna ever do anything like this. And they sort of said, yeah, we're kind of working on it, but it didn't sound like it's something that's coming soon. But I'm going to keep AWeber because I have such a great discount with them and I'll continue to use them on to create a website. So if you're interested in learning about selling courses on your own site or just selling courses and creating courses in general, make sure you're on my existing list because when the new site is out, you'll get a notification and you'll also get a tremendous discount to my one-on-one course that comes out. Now I want to talk a little bit about selling products. The one mistake that I made with my to create a website site is I waited a long time before I launched my first product. The disadvantage of doing this is you sometimes struggle with what to put out with your product because you have so much free content out there and it makes it a little bit difficult to be original. Now, there's nothing wrong with repackaging what you have online, but it's just important that you tell your visitors that that's what you've done. So launch your product early. And what's great about that is your blog content and your website content can all softly pre-sell your paid course. Now, when it comes to selling products from WordPress, probably the most popular plugin out there is WooCommerce. Now, I didn't talk about installing plugins, but it's very easy to do. All you do is go to plugins, add new, type in WooCommerce. I've already got it installed, but you would just install this and then you can follow the documentation for selling your own products. It's really pretty straightforward. Now, if you wanna set up a membership site or maybe you wanna host videos or courses, you can use something a little bit more advanced and this is not free, unlike WooCommerce. You can use a membership plugin and what this will allow you to do is have your customers pay monthly or yearly and they can have access to certain content on your website. So what a membership plugin does is it locks down certain pages on your site so only your members can view it and you can make your site as simple or as complex as you want. For my new site, I'm going to be using Member Mouse and at the time I'm recording this, it starts at $20 a month for up to 50,000 members. And so when somebody goes to my site to buy a course, Member Mouse will take the payment information and then redirect them back to the pages on my site that host the course. So selling video, selling products and content from your website is really easy thanks to WordPress. It's really just about choosing the plugin that's best for you and then learning how to use the plugin. My best tip for your first product is to create a one-on-one introductory product. This can attract beginners who want to learn about the fundamentals and then you can use that course to sell more advanced courses in the future. So I hope this gave you a great overview of starting a website and some things you need to think about when it comes to arranging your site, starting your email list, installing an e-commerce plugin so you can sell from your WordPress site. Obviously this wasn't very specific. I kept it pretty general because things can change and I wanted to make sure these videos can stay relevant for quite some time. But if you have any questions, let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.